So I want to know with the two of you, what is this, this time with the pandemic and also with all the civil unrest in this country, what has this taught you about yourselves? Did you learn something new about yourselves? Are you <laughs> more skills than you thought yet? Are you cooking better? Are you realizing you don't like a lot of people you had in your life? And you're like, I might use this pandemic as a continue this. Uh, right. Time. I don't know. I'll go first since Jay pointed <laughs> passed it on. You know, yes, I have been cooking more and all those things. But, you know, honestly, to be very transparent, I had to face a lot of stuff with myself and um, I realized that there's a lot of things I don't like about myself. Really? Yeah. And I actually kind of, it opened the door for me to kind of explore loving myself. And um, I just didn't realize that I don't love myself that much. And mm -hmm. <laughs> which is so crazy to think about. And even, you know, even as like a biracial woman too, who with all of the race riots and everything going on, it's like, there's a lot of shame there. Like I know I walk with privilege and I also walk with, you know, brown skin, tan skin and the duality of that. Even like, I know that um, all of these movements have been happening and, I, and I've been kind of a part of it, kind of not, but I've been so focused on my career and all these things. I just, there was a lot of shame. Like, what have I been doing? What have I been standing for? Like, what, why am I here? Like, what, what is the purpose of this? And just kind of, you know, not being able to hide behind work or um, just if having things to do, even though I was still really busy during quarantine, because we still had a lot of work to do. It, I wasn't busy in the sense of like going places, trying to do all these things. And yeah, I just realized there's a lot of things I don't like about myself. And there are things I can change, but I've never really taken the time to work on myself. And so, um, which I'm very grateful for. And so I'm kind of starting new now and like, okay, this is time to work on you and just be a better human. Being honest about that, because that's a difficult conversation to have, like the biracial plight i guess you'd say you know and, and that's it's comp it can be complex and you admitting that you have guilt and, and realizing you do what you do experience some privilege and then also sometimes you don't right it's it's right and so this time has made you feel like you weren't doing enough and are you now what, what are your plans moving forward well i think too for me like just to be really i'm being so transparent it's kind of embarrassing but <laughs> you know i just haven't taken the time to educate myself and policies what's going on you know even though I vote and even though I do look up right before voting kind of what's going on I don't really fully understand what I'm voting for I don't really fully understand what's going on in the world like like a lot of people the past four or five years people were so overwhelmed that people checked out and I was one of them and so moving forward I want to be you know, more educated for myself. And, you know, luckily my fiance is very, he has a degree in um, political science. So he's very more aware. So he's kind of helping me through like just being more educated citizen I love on that. every level. Jay, as a black man, yeah. um, oh, we have one minute before break. So I just, and we'll pick up after yeah. the break. Okay. How do you, how does this make you feel? Like, I think I have been saying we need to have some kind of town hall meeting with black folks biracial black I still consider biracial folks black but not all do right I think we need to have these kind of conversations because there is still resentment amongst ourselves right you don't experience what I experience you're not full black but you don't understand what I experienced not being accepted by black people it's a lot of pain and one pain is not greater than the other it's still pain and how do you feel as a black man hearing what Michelle is saying well I thought you were going to ask me how I felt about uh, what's been going on and, and I can honestly say one thing that I know for sure is that Every black man who watched the George Floyd video saw themselves there. Every black man reflected on their own version of that situation, which has happened to them, which has happened to me, which has happened to every man hold, I know. Hold that thought, because I, I want you to be able to complete the whole thought. We have to go to yeah. break. We'll be back. We're going to pick right back up with you when we come back right here on Fox Soul.
There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day and keeps me company when I'm doing schoolwork. I like it when he jumps up on the table too. He is a veggie thief. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. Can't say that I've met anybody that doesn't love him too. When I adopted Turtle, I discovered all the things that make him unique. He's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly he's all pure love. Back to Fox Soul right now. I'd like to re-welcome our guests, Jay August Richards and Michelle Weaver. Now, before we went to break, Jay, you had the floor and you were talking about seeing the images and the video of George Floyd and being a black man. Yeah. Most black men could see themselves in that position. Yeah. We saw, that could be you. Yeah, we saw our, our nephews and our sons and our brothers. And, you know, we saw ourselves. And it probably, I, I mean, I feel like I can say with 100% certainty, it took us all back to that time because every black man in this country has a moment where you realize that people don't value your life in the same way that they do others. I think about my own situation where I was sort of walking down the street minding my own business and this man said, where are you coming from? And I said, huh? He said, where are you coming from? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. And he was like, no, seriously, where are you coming from? And I was like, none of your business. And he was like, I'm gonna call the police. And I was like, okay, dude, I don't know what you're on or whatever. I got in my car and he stood in front of my car while he called the police. Basically, long story short, he thought I was robbing a, an apartment building and I was just walking down the street. We've all had that incident. We've all had that encounter. It's amazing that the world seems to be waking up to the consciousness of that and how unfair it is. But what people don't also know is the amount of concessions we have to make to move through the world, the, the, the things that we unconsciously and consciously know how we have to do to make people comfortable, uh, to make or get our point across, to not intimidate folks. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's exhausting, really. So it's so powerful for me to see that become a national conversation and one that I feel I've been committed to my entire life even in terms of my work. I feel like my work as an actor is my activism. I knew that when I came out of here, I wanted to play roles of black men of all variety. I wanted to show the humanity of black men, whether that was on a sci-fi series playing a vampire hunter, or whether that's playing a, a district attorney on um, raising the bar, you know what I mean? So yeah, this conversation is my life's work, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm very connected to it. I felt deeply guilty about not being able to go to the protest because I was worried about Corona. But ultimately I made the choice that if people in the 50s and 60s risk their lives to march, then I'm going to do the same. I don't judge anybody else for not doing it, but I had to do it. I felt like I had to. So yeah, that's how I feel. Thank you for that. I mean, we need to hear more of these yeah. conversations. I remember how frustrating it would be from white America we, they, we would constantly be diminished our feelings, right? Or dismissed. Oh, you're pulling the race card. I mean, it, it, what, it comes down to even trying to take the bass out of your voice when you want to make a professional phone call, right? And you yeah. want some help. It's little things like that, that every day you're reminded that it, there, the equality is not there yet. I want to read a couple of your comments. RB says to you, Michelle, thank you for acknowledging colorism and your privilege. And um, Everett Sherrod says, J. August has been in and around many roles that involves actions such as, such as Angel, Arrow, and S.H.I.E.L.D. I love S.H.I.E.L.D., okay? Love, yes. love. Any more projects in the works? And will you return as Deathlock on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? So when I got the role uh, as Mike Peterson on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I signed a non-disclosure agreement that was about that thick that doesn't expire until the series is over. So I can't even talk about it in any 
way, shape, or form. Marvel is very, uh, has things on lockdown. And uh, I'm very impressed that you remembered my role on Arrow. That is, I love that role. That was my first sort of super villain, superhero villain type of character, Mr. Blank. And uh, I poured a lot of me, a, a lot of stuff into that role. And it was a quick role. It was one episode. So I appreciate you acknowledging that. Thank you.